Good morning, everyone. At the outset, I would like to extend my very sincere thanks for giving me an opportunity to be a part of the annual convention of the Association of Spine Surgeons of India. Today, I'm going to share a few of my thoughts on a very pertinent and important topic in the perioperative care of a spine patient, the current concepts of multimodal analgesia and optimizing postoperative pain. I bring to you greetings from Ganga Medical Center and Hospital Coimbatore. And as all of us know, postoperative pain is a combination that results due to both somatic and emotional component uh, after surgery. The intensity decreases over time, and usually it is located in the proximity of the surgical lesion, can increase the risk of postoperative complication and delayed recovery if it's not taken care of. The incidence, the duration, on, and the intensity of the pain varies considerably from one patient to another. There are several factors which result in this. Number one, because of the patient per se, and very importantly, now it has been noted, the pharmacogenetics and the pharmacogenomics of analgesic drugs working on a particular patient. For the same dose that we give, different patients of the same body mass index give varying results. Some of them have very good pain relief and some not. And now we understand this due to pharmacogenetics, uh, which changes which happens in these patients and it's a new topic for discussion. Next thing is the surgical procedure per se and the amount of tissue injury which happen. Third, how do hospital respond to acute postoperative pain and how they've developed their acute pain service. And number four, the perioperative analgesic plan and sometimes even the country and the culture matters in postoperative pain. Are we doing enough? for our patients, several studies have clearly indicated that acute postoperative pain is unacceptably high, even in developed nations. I just wanted to share with you uh, the assist patient survey, which I was the principal investigator. The aim was to compare pain scores at rest and ambulation and to assess patient satisfaction between the different modalities of pain management at different time points after surgery. And uh, this was an investigator initiated prospective multi centric trial from over 12 centers in India involving 1046 patients, out of which 32% were spine patients. So the methods included pain scores, patients and caregiver satisfaction toward post operative pain, treatment, and overall pain management at the hospital were captured at three different time points through a specifically designed questionnaire. And the conclusion was this survey clearly indicated in Indian subcontinent that the current standards of care in postoperative pain management remain suboptimal and that acute pain services, wherever it exists, is yet to reach its full potential for affording pain relief to our patients. Why should we insist on postoperative pain? It reduces, if the pain is unrelieved, it reduces the mobility, increases the stress and anger and also impairs the respiratory function. It also produces immune depression and there is metabolic hyperactivity and negative nitrogen balance, which will impair wound healing and there is impaired bowel movement. And some of the visceral complications include myocardial infarction and ischemia, tachycardia, dysarrhythmia, thrombolytic events, metabolic acidosis and significant peripheral vasoconstriction. And hence, the potential benefit seems to outweigh the complications. So improved rate of recovery, improved patient comfort, reduced morbidity and faster discharge. And it's also been very clearly noticed that acute postoperative pain, if it's not relieved, it results in prolonged postoperative pain. There's an excellent article which shows that quality care has to be given and quality has been defined as six domains of effective, equitable, timely, efficient, safe and patient-centered measures in which one of the most important thing is pain relief. Pain after spine surgery results from pain generators. And now the new concept is procedure specific treatment to be offered in each spine surgery. 
So pain from the back actually originates from different tissues such as vertebra, intervertebral disc, ligaments, dura, nerve root sleeves, facet joint capsules, fascia and muscles, which all generate pain. And the spine pain I just wanted to emphasize is we are fortunate that there is no visceral component and everything, the pain perception is carried through the posterior ramai of the spinal nerve, which gets connected to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve. A point that I just wanted to mention is there is a cross connectivity of these nerves. And that's why in spine surgery, sometimes apart from the local pain, there is referred pain that is happening. The types of pain it divided into nociceptive, inflammatory and neuropathic. It's important to understand this so that we can go for a multimodal pain relief in our patients. So what do we do when we get to the spine patient? This is an excellent concept of preemptive analgesia. The night before surgery, in all of our patients, we put this to prevent peripheral and central sensitization. So on the day prior to the surgery, they get pregabalin 75 milligram, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like acyclofenac, 100 milligram, if the renal parameters are normal, one gram paracetamol, pantoprazole, and alprazolam to produce good uh, sedation and anxiolysis. In some centers, they use statins uh, for its anti-inflammatory effect. We don't use it. So this is on the day prior to the surgery. On the day of the surgery, the zero hour medication is to augment the preemptive analgesia. So we use paracetamol intravenous. Ketrolac 30 milligram is given intravenous if it's uh, the renal functions as normal. Dexamethasone 8 milligram is given for its anti-inflammatory property as a component of multimodal. Then we use opioids and the drug of choice we use is fentanyl. So this is a zero hour medication and this is uh, another component of preemptive analgesia. And once positioned and the surgeon in our institution, the spine surgeons do local infiltration with local anesthetic solution in skin and subcutaneous tissue to decrease the pain generation from this when the incision is made. The preoperative regional anesthesia nerve block, I think it's the future to decrease significant pain. I'm going to discuss with it in a minute later. And intraoperative analgesia is mainly dependent on opioid infusions, fentanyl and remifentanyl, paracetamol, dexmetomidin, and the drugs which have been tried in several centers across the globe. Apart from this is ketamine, magnesium, and lignocaine. We predominantly depend on fentanyl infusion, paracetamol and dexmetomidin. And uh, postoperatively to continue the pain relief, I think one of the significant uh, issues in the postoperative period in spine surgery is the pain. And we have to evolve tools to know how much is the pain. And the best way to do is the numeric, numerical rating scale, the VAS score and Magal pain questionnaire and the new score for spine surgery is Roland Morris score. I would wanted the surgical team to discuss with the anesthetist the plan to assess the pain. So the intensity of the post-operative pain is directly proportional to the number of vertebrae involved in the surgery. Now in a multimodal analgesia, you try to use various combination of drugs so that they collectively produce a synergistic effect. So on post-op day one, they should get four grams of paracetamol. One gram paracetamol six hourly, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. The one which can be given intravenous is injection Ketrolac, 30 milligram IV eight hourly, and pregabalin 75 milligram in the night, dexamethasone eight milligram, a dose at zero hours and after eight hours. And apart from this multimodal therapy, you may use opioids as a rescue. And in patients in whom you don't want to use your opioid, the weaker drugs like tremadol and tependol can be used. Slow release buprenorphine patches seems to aid and we use 10 milligram buprenorphine patch. Once you apply it preoperatively, it stays for a week and it's a slow release and does not produce any respiratory depression. And the most important thing that has evolved in the last couple of years is ultrasound guided regional block for our patients who are undergoing spine surgery. So in, there is a ladder, mild intensity pain, moderate intensity pain, and severe intensity pain, where you keep increasing uh, the doses of the drug and the number of times it's administered. And uh, the newer concept, which I just wanted to speak in the last couple of minutes, is the chest and the abdominal wall blocks. 
and this seems to offer the best component of multimodal analgesia. It reduces the pain scores in the first 24 hours, reduces the opioid consumption in the first 12 hours, does not produce nausea, vomiting, less sedation, early weaning from ventilator if you're ventilating your patients, and very short hospital stay, and less incidence of chronic pain. So what do you actually do? The intercostal block uh, is what we do, and the currently, for all spine surgeries, it's the erector spinae block, where you deposit the drug between the transverse uh, process uh, and the, the erector spinae muscle. So here it is what is the drug is deposited. Uh, so this is a, a schematic diagram which shows between the transverse process and the ESM, if you place the drug here, it blocks the, both the dorsal and ventral ramae and completely cuts off the, the pain sensation to the spinal cord. So this is how you place the, the drug between the transverse process and the ESP. Uh, and this is excellent for spine surgery. This is the sonoanatomy, the three muscles, the transverse process, and the drug will be deposited here. This has made a huge change and impact and continuous erector spine catheters can be placed in major spine procedures using elastomeric infusion pumps. The other um, Thing that has evolved now is local infiltration analgesia called surgical side catheter uh, where the surgeon places uh, the, the catheter inside the surgical wound and connect to an elastomeric infusion pump. This seems to be yet another mode of producing uh, regional anesthesia at the local site as a component of multimodal analgesia. But a multimodal analgesia is it means that more than one mode which consists of paracetamol, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, pregabalin, regional anesthesia, and if in spite of this the patient has pain, then you go for opioid. Best is to go for opioid sparing. So effective pain control aided by the judicious use of different pain control therapies can significantly improve the overall success of surgery. Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity, and I'm sure that uh, from now on, we'll get excellent results by incorporating multimodal analgesia in spine surgery. Thank you very much.